don't want them. Hey. Knock them again. Yeah. That's why we're we ready to switch. Fed up on them. So we're ready to hey. switch. Switch. That's switch. why we switch. switch. We don't feel good. We don't want them. Hey. Knock them again. That's why we switch. We don't feel good. We don't want them. Good night, good night. Um, before I begin, though, let me let me just tell you, you know, this 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 platform has been very strategically placed because although it is in Christchurch West, you know, over there is in Michael South, right there on that border, this is where the border is. So let me start first by saying, I have come first to endorse the candidacy. Of Maria Agar. This is the constituency that has never given their vote to the Democratic Labour Party. Only bright people live in Christchurch West. They've never had an affair at any level with the Democratic Labour Party. Sensible, upright, serious people. And therefore, I hope again on February the 21st. I know for a fact Maria Agard is going to the Parliament of Barbados. And let me tell you this. Uh, some years ago, in the short past, I was the Minister of Tourism and International Transport. And I happened to meet Maria Agard. I didn't know her well. But she was recommended to me as a potential candidate to sit on the board of the Grantley Adams International Airport. And in that capacity, Maria Agar distinguished herself. A woman of proper intellect, a decent woman, cutting the mold of the quality of women that the Barbados Labour Party always sends to the parliament. And therefore, I am asking from this platform that you go out on February the 21st and send another proper and upright woman, intelligent woman, to the Parliament of Barbados. And I'm sure that you will. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come here particularly to endorse Maria's candidacy, but also to speak about issues that affect the people of St. Michael South and Christchurch West and Barbados generally. Because from these platforms of the Barbados Labour Party, what you will hear is substance. What you will hear is, you will hear issues that affect the livelihoods and the development and the future of the people of Barbados. This is not a place for salacious, nasty gossip that emanates from the platforms of the Democratic Labour Party. Fandel Stewart went to Bear Street and said the worst things about me. I will not go into the gutter with Fandel Stewart because Fandel Stewart is unfit to be a Prime Minister of Barbados. Huh? When a man of his standing, even by his standards, he has diminished the office of Prime Minister. Even for the lowly standards that he has set in terms of his performance, he has brought the office of Prime Minister even lower by talking about people's sexuality and the like, of which he knows nothing but Fandel Stewart. That is the type and quality of the man. I will not go there with him. I am a married man. Nobody ever married to Fandel Stewart. Who would? Who would? A man that has a face that only a mother could love and a teacher would accept because she's getting paid. You know, I can take off the gloves for them, you know. I can take off the gloves for them very soon. This campaign got a long way to go. And I can, I can take off the gloves for them now. Bare knuckles. But I will not go in the gutter with them. I have told you all before, this is a prime minister, you know, a couple of nights ago, there was a fire in King's Village. In the early, in the wee hours of the morning, I had spoken at three political meetings and I was on my way home. 
and within eyesight of my gate, I was called to tell me that there was a fire in King's Village. And I turned my car around and came back here. I left here at 4 o'clock in the morning. Stuart has not appeared yet. You know, you know, I, I, I am telling you now, the people of St. Michael's South on that side, you can compare the record of stewardship between New Elite and Fandel Stewart. I don't need you to like me or love me. All I want you to do is ask what I've done. What has Lich done for me lately? Compared with what Fandel has done. You ever hear the song by Peter Scarlett? Love me for a reason. Old reggae singer from Jamaica. He says, check it out. Peter Scarlett, love me for a reason. Let that reason be love. In this case, let that reason be work. Frondell Stewart is the laziest, unaccomplished, ugliest prime minister we have ever had. I am taking off the gloves to Frondell tonight. Let me tell you though, this is a man who is a chronic failure at everything that he has ever done. And the most chronic failure he has ever had is his inability to communicate with people. Lot of big words, but you don't understand what he's saying. This is a man that has shown the most disdain and disrespect for Barbadians. And is only occupied with his place in history. Not with the people of Barbados. And I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, on February the 21st, the choice is clear. You can vote for the failed policies of the Democratic Labour Party and condemn yourself to an uncertain future of poverty. Or you can go with the bold, visionary leadership of the Barbados Labour Party and ensure a better tomorrow. It's your choice. It's your choice. I have come to this platform to tell you the way you compare my record of stewardship with stewards, it is like chalk and cheese. We have done the work. In the four, eight years that we represented this constituency, we know he represented it for almost six years because he's the first prime minister that ever went over five. So you can now compare. You've got, you got years to compare. We put more people to work in St. Michael South than Stuart and Sandyford combined. We put more urban houses, over 100 families in urban houses in St. Michael South. We were the ones who created a back to school program that put $40,000 in the last year in the pockets of the people of St. Michael South to send their children to school. It was not a government program. It was an ordinary program that we brokered along with our benefactors to send people's children back to school. Because if you put... If you go to the welfare, you're really needy. One cakey pants or one uniform cannot send a child to school for a whole week. We did turn around. And we did, we had an aftercare program in which we looked after people's children coming from, you know, let me tell you something else. It is, a, it is said that children get into the most trouble and learn deviant behavior between 3 o'clock on evenings when they leave school, or 2.30, and when they're once again enjoined or come together with adult supervision. So a lot of children, you know, this was the day, there's no extended family, no, no grandmothers to look after you. So children come home, now they got internet and all kinds of things. You can look at anything from the internet. What happens is this, we had a program that allowed people to be able to look after their children after school. We had a homework program in St. Michael South. We had a single mother's program in St. Michael South. We created recreational facilities in the Bear Land and Britain's Hill. Put lights on the Bear Pasture. Put lights on the King's Village Court right here. We resurfaced the court. These are the issues. We sponsored the independence competition for basketball every year here. Those are the things that we did. 
And I'm telling you this, you know, it is a very simple matter. My record of stewardship compared to Fondell Stewart's record of stewardship, there is no comparison. Stewart does not even have the respect to come and ask the people for a vote. And I'm telling you, if you vote for Fondell Stewart on February 21st, you are wasting your vote. It is a real state vote. Come with us and ensure a better tomorrow for you and your children. But we won't deal with the one the call Richard Seeley, you know, because I tell them this, you know, you see this Ministry of Tourism? I can run the Ministry of Tourism with one eye, one foot, and one hand tied behind my back and do a better job than Richard Seeley is doing now. And the people that are on the south coast of Barbados, people who thrive from the tourism industry, the Temi Casarina sent one people yesterday or day before. Barbados is the worst performing country reporting to the Caribbean Tourism Organization. Ladies and gentlemen, don't believe Lynch. Go to the CTO's website and check. Of all of the countries reporting to the CTO, 31 countries, Barbados had the worst performance of any country in terms of absolute arrivals in 2012. And all the other countries report, reporting relate to the same external environment that we relate to. So don't let them tell you about the external environment is so hostile. Yes, it is. But our issue is this. We can do better in Barbados. We have always led. And when I was Minister of Tourism, and I went to a CTO Ministers of Tourism meeting, and anybody was talking, and I let you open him out, people stopped and listened. Not because of me, because of Barbados always led the way. People followed us. In the Caribbean, you produce a Barbados dollar in the OECS. It is like a US dollar, man, or it used to be. Nowadays, if you produce a Barbados dollar in St. Vincent or St. Lucia to pay for something, they call it counterfeit. They allow it to lock you up. That's what Barbados has been relegated to under the dams. And in the midst of all of this, you have a set of people. There's one idiot, Ninkampu, in that lineup that the dams have, a fellow called Peter Jilts. A red man, in my opinion, who has lived his life trying to disadvantage black people because he thinks that he is white. Now, could you imagine... I left Barbados. I heard that Stuart said something about me and David Gill that we are trying to feed at the, at the government trough or the public trough, something foolishness like that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, I left office in 2008 or in 2008 in January and I never missed a beat. I am a part-time lecturer at the University of the West Indies. I have my own thriving consultancy. I've done the tourism setup, established the tourism authority in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the one in Grenada. I do this because I love the people of Barbados and I want to give back. But I don't struggle. Stuart is a man that has never distinguished himself in the practice of the law. You ask yourself, don't believe me. The people in the legal fraternity, I see Ralph Thorne behind there, you know, he's a lawyer. The people in the legal fraternity will tell you Stuart is lazy. Stuart has never, name five cases for me that Frandell Stuart has ever done completion through the judgment that he's associated his name with. Name, when he was the attorney general of Barbados, name a piece of groundbreaking legislation or any piece that Frandell has ever attached his name to. Fandel Stewart is a colossal failure. Everything he has done. A man who became prime minister by default. And then he comes with some nonsensical argument about Lynch saying that I beat the prime minister. I never told anybody beating a prime minister, a sitting prime minister. People that see me and tell me that I beat a prime minister. Now, this is the issue. In 1994, I lost to Erskine Sandiford in St. Michael's South. I had just returned to Barbados. 
1999, I ran again. He was a member of parliament. I beat Sandy Ford in St. Michael's South. Well, Sandy Ford, if he was a prime minister before, he was a prime minister then too. He was a former prime minister, but he was a prime minister. Then in 2003, the people kicked Stuart out of St. Of Philip South. Even his own people, he could not represent properly and they rejected him. And he came to St. Michael's South in 2003. And I beat Stuart in St. Michael's South in 2003. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't remember that. And then he says that political illiteracy or some foolishness that I have never beaten a, a sitting prime minister. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to beat one on February the 21st. I'm going to beat one on February the 21st. So when Stuart comes to you, but let me tell you, the dance will stop at nothing. The dance will stop at nothing in terms of how they deal. I left Barbados. I was hired by the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association to take up a job as their deputy director general. Could you imagine that I leave Barbados? I can imagine you tell lies for me because you know all the people talk about telling lies and talk about all the foolishness they talk. I want to you tonight about these issues, about what has happened to the clique of money. Now, let me tell you, you know when you read the Clico report, the Clico report makes lovely, the forensic report makes lovely reading. I go to the CHTA to work, and the first day that I land in the job, the man who is director general shows me a letter that came from an anonymous source in Barbados. It is a letter that appeared on the Barbados Free Press. It is a letter that is alleged is written by the Dems. And this is what you relate to when you go. The letter read, Good luck to the Caribbean Hotel and, so Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. You will need it. You have hired defeated tourism minister Noel Lynch as your new director general and director of membership. We hope that you have more luck than the Barbados citizens did in getting accountability and answers about where their money went and when he was in charge. Hey, we hope that the CHTA has more luck than the Barbados citizens in getting accountability and answers from Noel Lynch about where their money lay. Mr. Lynch was part of the cover-up that denied Barbadian citizens any accountability of the hundreds of millions of dollars of their tax money thrown into the black hole known as the Gems of Barbados. Then, then there was the disaster of the Cricket World Cup and the outward lies that Lynch told us about the event when it was plainly apparent that he was lying. That is the kind of wicked people that these people are. You see, if you stop me, if you want me to don't have a seat, I don't have a problem, you know. And Thompson was the biggest liar of all. He didn't know that he had children and a family when he was lying on people like me and Clyde Maskell. And I'm not making any excuses for him. I have never owned any plantation anywhere. That is the nonsense that was spouted from Democratic Labour Party platforms. All I ever did, me and my wife is went to the bank and get a mortgage like any other Barbadian. I struggle to pay because these times are tough. But they would go to the ends trying to make it seem that Lynch carrier money and thief money and all, all kinds of things. That is, the, that is what happened in this constituency in 2008. I have never stolen a dime from anybody. All I did was improve my lot and try to lift myself up that every Barbadian should be trying to do. But the Democratic Labour Party, they're the, the worst set. I almost call a bad word. I almost said something about them that I wouldn't have liked to say. Because we are keeping the campaign clean. And I don't want to get into that. But I'm going to show you this, you know. All over this Barbados, they are abusing. They can abuse me. And they can allege all kinds of things that I would allege. 
Why do I understand how you, you, you could really, you look at a man of my handsomeness, you could compare me to Fandel Stewart. If you had to, if you had to get, take a bet, I mean, what rubbish. I mean that people like me and Maria, you know, me and Maria could walk down the aisle, two beautiful people too. Two beautiful, sensible we would have bright children, you know that. Not like in the dens, you have idiots. I am saying this. Maria Egar is the type of person, not only is Maria Egar an intelligent person, but from my experiences with her, she cares about the people of this community. And she didn't start, she didn't start when she was running for office. Maria Egard has always been there for the people of this community. She is the one who is inheriting a seat because I believe she will go to parliament from two proper representatives. Sir Henry Ford has distinguished himself and there's no comparison. And William Doogie that did a sterling job. And I have no doubt that cutting the mold of the quality of representation of the people of Barbados and what you have gotten in Christchurch West, that she will do another proper job. And I give you my word, I give you my word, man, I will beat she with a time and rod. She will give you proper representation. She will give you, she will lift up the people of Christchurch West even more. And she is going to Parliament, because you know, this is the party that has always sent women to Parliament. The Democratic Labour Party is now trying to catch up we have always sent good women to parliament in the BLP. We respect women in the Barbados Labour Party. We don't talk about them anywhere. Signal and them talk about women. I heard that rap, Stuart. I heard him in parliament, you know, talk about me and Motley in the worst way. In the worst of ways. I told you all, I've warned you on both sides. If you're voting for the Dems, on February 21st, you're wasting your vote. They're not the kind of people that make Barbados and lift up Barbados and make us feel proud. We need, ladies and gentlemen, to secure for our children and our children's children a better tomorrow. Barbados can once again be the shining light of this region. We've always led this region in development policy, in the social engineering that makes a difference, in the economic engineering that makes that difference. And when people tell you about, you don't build the economy and build a society, what nonsense. You need, you need cash to care. You need to ensure that you do it. I want you on February 21st to put your hands in the hands of the party that has always looked after you. The party that has always put money in your pockets. Uh, I, make, I heard a straight way to Passage Road and said that the concept of putting money in people's pockets cannot be an ideal of a political party. We have never heard such damn foolishness. Uh, what would a political organization exist for in a small developing society but to bring people out of poverty. But there's but it's no greater ideal than that. And I make no excuses. I make no apologies. I am part of Owen Arthur's team that will put money back into your pockets. That will put you back to work. And let me tell you, you know the dance have attacked me on every platform. Every platform that attacked me, you know the only thing that they never say yet is that Lynch was a bad tourism minister, you know. They won't say that. Because you see, you know, tourism is the only game that we have got. And if tourism is floundering, every other productive sector is floundering as well. And there's no money in your pocket. Since the Democratic Labour Party have come to office, let me tell you what has been the legacy. Your VAT has gone up. Your light bill has gone up. Your water bill has gone up. Your groceries have gone up. Your land tax has gone up. Your road tax has gone up. 
the cost of living is out of control and your blood pressure has gone up as well. There's absolutely nothing that the Dems have not done to savage you every day and they have not delivered any of the promises that they have made. Oh, the liquor license. Oh, Lord. The liquor license. They have even sent up the silver. The silver has gone up too. You can imagine how a barbarian that loves his silver now has got to pay more. Because they've sent up, who is that out there? A man, a man is jumping up and down when they talk about the silver. Silver has gone up. And I'm not talking about, this is not cash for gold or cash for silver. I'm talking about silver in the bottle. Ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am telling you, I am telling you this. From this platform, You know, I told you, everything in tourism, everything in cost of living gone up. By the time this year, you know, which is silly on the other hand, on the other side. Oh, they, they get my, oh Lord. You know, Glenn Murray just flash a light in my face when I am now starting to roll, to roll. But let me tell you, under the Democratic Labour Party, Tourism has been savage by they got Sealy. Sealy has eaten all the food at all the cocktail parties. Fly first class all around the world. And we can't get a tourist at all to come to Barbados. Sissy Tech office. Arrivals down. Earnings down. Investment down. Rooms down. Airline seats down. The BTA morale is down. All marketing dollars are down. Under the Democratic Labour Party, all tourism has been going down and down and down. And he barely get bigger. Because he doesn't understand. The object of a tourism minister in office is not to visit other people's countries. It is to get them to come to our country. He ain't get it yet, you know. Silly has not gotten it. And he can attack, I, I, I hear, I hear he say something about my wife on the platform. I wait, I wait him for him. I wait him for him. I am waiting for that. Because, see, I don't mind this banter between us as opponents. But when you get personal, you start to, to get personal, I, I get very personal with you, man. Until I get very personal. I am saying this, ladies and gentlemen. They tell me I got to wrap up and I got to go. I repeat what I've told you before. You have got to make a choice on February 21st. I believe it is the clearest choice in a generation. I believe it's the clearest choice in a generation. You can stay with the failed policies of the Democratic Labour Party and condemn yourself and your family in the near future to a life of poverty and despair. Or you can go over the bold, imaginative, visionary leadership of Owen Arthur and the Barbados Labour Party. I am proud to be a part of Arthur's team that will make the next transformation of Barbados. We have done it before and we can do it again. Every time we come to office, we have got to pick up the pieces of the Democratic Labour Party because they leave lives and bodies strewn all over Barbados. And the only thing that we have got to do is pick, your, pick you up on February the 21st. Go to the polls and give Maria Agar your vote. Secure a better tomorrow for your children and your children's children. On that side, give Noel Lynch the vote. Make sure that Noel Lynch goes back to Parliament. And I'm telling you, we are the people that will secure a certain and better tomorrow for you. We have done it before. We can do it again. Give us the love. We love you all. Good night. God bless you. Yeah. yeah.
We ready to switch, fed up on them. So we ready to switch. Okay. Switch, switch, switch. Hey. We done with 